Rob and I, particularly on Game of Thrones, we start um, at quite different times, actually, um, because the writers and uh, the American producers are based in Los Angeles. I start with them in the writer's room. We have a outline that's um, released first, and that's just released amongst a very small group of people. Um, our showrunners and uh, executive producers, David Benioff and Dan Weiss, they sit and talk the other producers and myself through every scene of the new season, then also discuss any inspirations um, that they would like the art department to take for, for that coming season. And actually the document that they release is fantastic because yeah. even though it's not exactly as the scripts are going to read, scene to scene from an art department perspective, they basically have everything we need to know. So it's enough to get us started. And then I would then go and do a scout around our foreign locations and um, try and determine any um, you know, offshore work that we'll be doing. And then somewhere around 15 weeks out, um, historically, uh, the art department has started. And Rob, you don't always start at exactly the same time. Yeah, yeah. about 15 weeks out, yeah, start out. And then, like Deb says, Deb gives me uh, the outline that she's, she's been given. And I specifically look at it from a sort of set deck perspective. And then, as Deb says, we will then start to sort of break down the outline. And then the scripts are sort of introduced. We start breaking those down, uh, introducing the sort of budget element to it. And then we have this discussion start about how how and what it's going to look like uh, the season and, and the world, basically. So, yeah, I start about 15 weeks out. As Rob says, any new worlds that we're establishing, any extra crew that we need to bring in, any um, specialty things that we're going to have to specifically design, um, what's going to take the longest to make, what the lead times will be, all that sort of thing, we, we start negotiating all of that through quite early, actually. Yeah. It all yeah. happens pretty fast. Yeah. I think it's very specific to Game of Thrones, actually. Um, just in terms of the beast that it is, um, yeah. Certainly, it's trying to achieve film finishes on a television schedule. So um, that's been something that's been quite difficult, certainly originally, to adjust to is just the speed that these people need to be able to work at and uh, the amount of decisions that are made actually very quickly. When we have the shooting units and the two shooting units running as well, that's something I've never come across on such a scale. It's, um, yeah, it's vast. vast and, and certainly by the end of every season, we end up with three or four units shooting at the same time. Yeah. Um, just to sort of sweep everything up before um, before the season ends. So, yeah, I I don't I don't know of anything else that would ever try and um, achieve what Game of Thrones achieves. It's it's just so ambitious in everything that it sets out to do. The thing that Dan and David did best is they managed to um, assemble a group of sort of workaholic perfectionists all in the same space, and uh, I think that's the only way that the show the show gets through. I think the story of yours yeah. is actually more interesting I mean, than mine. Mine sort of, yeah, I mean, my father was a production designer um, and my brothers have just begun as a production designer now. So I've always known, I used to go around all the sets with dad. He used to work in Los Angeles quite a lot. He's, um, he, he did a, you know, about 30, 40 films. So um, I sort of went into set decorating as opposed, as opposed to production design. I was more interested in the sort of the fabrics, um, the textiles and, and that sort of side of it as opposed to the, sort of the drawing aspects of it. Um, and I used to go around with the set decorators on some of my father's jobs. And yeah, I, I sort of always had a feeling for that really. So, so yeah, started as a junior and sort of worked my way up really. So done doing it for about 20 odd years now. So. Yeah, nepotism at its best. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your DNA, Rob. It's in just, my, just put it that it's way. It's in my DNA, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a sort of family tradition, really. So, and, you know, it's, yeah, it's been great. It's been great. No, I mean, for me, I, um, yeah, it, it wasn't something that I knew I was going to do from a child or anything, but mm. uh, I went and studied architecture after I finished school. Um, after three years of that, I realised that that was drawing too many straight lines, so I went and uh, studied a... A theatre course, and in Australia there's a very famous um, uh, theatre school called the National Institute of Dramatic Art. And everyone from Baz Luhrmann, Catherine Martin, Kate Blanchett, all of those people have gone through there. So there's a great sort of film tradition, even though it's inside this theatre school. And uh, I was lucky enough to go there. And I graduated from there at just the right time when um, the film industry in Australia was really booming. And uh, to have had the um, experience in architecture that I had meant that uh, they were looking for people who could draw. And so when the Matrix, and this is the first Matrix, arrived on um, Sydney's shores, I, um, I joined the Matrix art department. And from that point on, I never worked in theatre again. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a collaboration, really. Yeah, um, it's a collaboration, it, yeah. it always starts, obviously, in the script. And um, 
Uh, for us on Game of Thrones, it's very much driven by um, Dan and David, our writers and showrunners. Every show that I've ever done has been very director driven in the same way. Like yeah. I've, I've been fortunate to work on very visual projects and uh, you know, when I worked with Baz Luhrmann on Moulin Rouge or with Alejandro González in Naruto, this was on 21 Grams, like both of those directors have incredibly strong visions. So I'm used to working um, in sort of world building as it, as it were. So um, I've, I've been very fortunate to work in those kind of environments where, uh, you know, you're trying to sort of push against the rules a bit and expand what you're trying to do. And I think it fits Game of Thrones perfectly because it, um, you know, we've got a reality, yeah. but it's just to the left of what we know now. And I think it's through establishing the reality that we have in the show that then it allows us to believe in dragons. And, um, and I think that's, that's part of the key to its success. Yeah, it's success. a fantasy element, yeah, yeah. We work a lot by instinct. Whatever actually feels good for that family, mm. like feels yeah. good for that house, yeah. um, tends to be the one that we go with. And I have to give the producers all the credit in the world because they have never said no to a location based on difficulty. Because um, often times locations might be difficult to access, they might need us to you know, put in a road of our own yeah. in order to get there, in order to bring all the machinery in or whatever. And uh, that's never been a problem for Game of Thrones. If the location provides all of the visual wonder that, uh, that the show needs, then, then they make it happen. And I think that's extraordinary. Yeah. Game of Thrones is so, so busy um, and everybody's, you know, stretched we're working constantly each day new sets like deb said we've got you know builds model makes um concepts so it's just trying to yeah make everybody sort of at ease and not feel under pressure so it's, it, it's a lot of multitasking as well lots of multitasking because you're dealing with yeah you know, um, locations abroad we've got spain spain this year and we had spain last year so it's juggling all the balls as well and I think also we have to remember that we're essentially working with artists. Yeah. And um, all of these people in their own right are incredibly talented people who could, um, you know, have successful careers on their own doing their very specific thing. But to be fortunate enough to have those sort of people within the Game of Thrones art department means that we can draw on all of their abilities all the time. So it's also giving people the breathing space so that they can do their best work. And um, when you're under the sort of time constraints that we have, sometimes that's very challenging. It's like, mm. please be as creative as you can, yeah, but yeah. you've only got five minutes. Yeah. So yes. um, <laughs> yeah, and sometimes that's, uh, it, it seems like it's very counterintuitive, but uh, we all feed off each other actually. Yeah. And, and we all have each other's back and we've been working together for a long time. So um, I think that all helps enormously. Yeah. You know, most projects you start, you do, you know, eight, nine months and then you sort of split and you might not see those people for, you know, a year or two or, or, or not at all. So, but on Game of Thrones, it's nice to have been working, yeah, with the same people for four or five seasons now, I think. So, yeah, I mean, we actually all genuinely like one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not forced at all. No, 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 no it's been brilliant. <laughs> the art department's so vast, it encompasses so many departments mm. in itself, but then probably the one that um, I would work with the most outside of our, our direct team would be special effects. Yeah, there's I think a big, so. big special effects crossover on Game yeah. of Thrones just with all the elements and the, yeah, the different sort of battle right. sequences and yeah, special effects is, is, is a huge crossover. So we, we have meetings every month, don't we, where everybody gets around the table, the HODs and head of departments, you know, to talk through the various scripts and the various episodes and the different directors. That's the other thing on Game of Thrones. We have sometimes up to five, I think five directors at one point, five directors, yes. five different DPs. Or, so, you know, especially art department wise, you know, we've always sort of laughed because we're covering every single director, every yes. single DP's needs. It's yes. not just, you know, any specific thing. We have to cover the whole broad base of everybody. So that's what's quite tough. So when, you, when you've got some directors and, and DPs just concentrating on their one episode, they sort of, you know, mm. have to remember what we're doing. <laughs> Yes, it's the funny. We, like, we always yeah, we laugh about it yeah. constantly because a director comes in and they might be shooting one or two episodes. Um, we're obviously doing the whole season, so yeah. it's a um, yeah, it's it's all kings and pawns. You've just got to deal with whoever's right in front of you yeah. at that time, yeah. and uh, work it accordingly. Because the thing is, is that we shoot all of the episodes at once as well. It's not like we shoot it by episode and move on. Mm. Um, we shoot it by location. So we might be shooting episode three one day and episode eight the next day, yeah. and we just move through. So um, you, any 
of the 600 script pages that we'll have, we could, we could shoot any of those at any time. You know, I remember some days, and particularly when I first arrived, you know, having a lineup of directors outside my office door, and I, did, and I just thought my head was going to explode. And it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because some of the, because of the, the changeover between directors and directors of photography, like Deb says, sometimes if we're on like a Winterfell set for one day, it might be an episode, you know, four scene, um, and then we'd have to strike it, revamp it for the next day, and then another director comes in, another director of photography comes in. They've got different needs, different lighting requirements, and that happens a lot where we have one, one set mm. um, set up for a different team one day and another team we have to set up the next day. So it's constantly shifting and changing and look, you know, just one yeah. set, isn't it? So, yeah. <laughs> so that's quite challenging sometimes. <laughs> it's like an extreme sport, and, um, and I, I sort of tend to think of it in those terms where, where we're in it as a team and we're mm. like these sort of bobsledders and uh, where you know, we, we spend all sort of season training and you know, ever since I've been there in season four, it builds you up to a point where you're ready to go for season seven yeah. and um, all of the work from previous years builds up to the point that you're at. Yeah. And then um, you're careening down the hill and trying not to wipe out on the corner. So yeah. if you make it to the bottom, it's fantastic. Yeah.